Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, including your shells, death slice, source, peasants, vassals. I'm Useful Idiot, and uh, today I'd like to talk about the public enemy is now the public. So public enemy number one is now the public. And uh, this has to do with the Brandon Raub case, uh, the veteran who was basically semi-arrested and semi-incarcerated for uh, comments he posted on Facebook. And um, so we've gotten to the point now where uh, a veteran and a citizen can post comments on a social network and have those comments viewed by law enforcement, Homeland Security, the FBI, and government. And then uh, officers of those entities sent to his house to take him without a warrant, without charges, and be incarcerated in a mental hospital. So that is the plain facts of the matter. And um, pretty disturbing the fact that the comments were, of course, uh, patriotic, uh, maybe a little vitriolic, um, metaphor, song lyrics. And um, anyway, the kind of material that would have been found in uh, Thomas Paine's Rights of Man or some other revolutionary literature of the, by the Founding Fathers. Um, but now that same kind of material posted on Facebook can get you arrested. So that is uh, that is the focal point of uh, this video because of what it represents. I mean, that's a, a big step in the idea of a police and surveillance state and a lack of civil liberties. And um, you can find lots of material on this elsewhere. Um, I want to put it in the context of a bigger picture because it seems like we've crossed a Rubicon and regardless of the fact that the uh, he was released and charges have been dropped um, the fact is the state has made it known they put a shot across the bow so that people now know that things you post can get you noticed so this proves exactly what I've been saying and others have been saying about the police, police and surveillance state and the fact that all citizens are being watched. And here is a good example of that, the Brendan Raub case. Um, it has a lot of big implications, so I think it's a, it's a turning point. But it's also part of a bigger trend. And that bigger trend is uh, little events like, uh, you know, repeatedly journalists and other people being arrested and threatened with uh, 5, 10, 20, 75 years in prison for filming police. Um, a man who was recently arrested at the Olympics um, because he didn't seem to be visibly enjoying the bike riding event he was attending. Uh, a man who was pulled off a plane flight because he's wearing an anti-TSA shirt. Um, or a National Guardsman who was training with a prop rifle and was arrested and charged with terrorism or a man who was uh, walking near school with a pellet gun and he was arrested on terrorism charges. And um, I just see a, a trend where, first of all, we have average citizens um, being swept up in this dragnet of terrorism, um, suspension of constitutional rights, and um, what appear to be pretty minor infractions. Um, so this this is the state flexing its muscles. And um, the fact that uh, certain things can happen that used to be just considered crime and prosecuted under our normal laws are now being put under the heading of terrorism, which means a whole different set of laws applies, including uh, the indefinite detention, suspension of habeas corpus, no warrants, no charges. And um, then another part of this quotient is the fact that, uh, of course, cops themselves that uh, perpetrate crimes, uh, like that gentleman recently who uh, was shot in the back of a police car while handcuffed. Um, I have to say it would be virtually impossible to pull a gun out of your pocket, lift it to your head, and shoot yourself in the head in handcuffs. And um, so anyway, we have this kind of activity in the police. The representatives of the state and yet, uh, there's a man in Florida now who faces 20 years in prison for biting a cop. And um, so if you film a cop or you bite a cop or you retaliate to a policeman, 
um, all the power of the state will come at you. But if you represent the state, you do not have to face any charges. And um, this works on a larger scale, too. We find this threat to the state where the whistleblowers are the ones who are persecuted, not the people that the whistle is being blown on. And we see that time and again. And uh, look at the time, effort, money that the state is spending to go after the likes of Julian Assange and Private Manning, uh, basically for publishing material um, that was mostly uh, information commonly known, but now both of them will be prosecuted, prosecuted under terrorism laws and therefore not under the law at all. And uh, I think this goes hand in hand too with the fact that they find these poor downtrodden dumbasses, some you know losers in Newburgh, New York or wherever, and the FBI has to set up all these entrapment cases over the years because they can't find any real terrorism. So they have to create the terrorism by finding these losers and saying, uh, hey, we'll give you money and explosives and notoriety and uh, you'll be famous. And um, so anyway, you know, these poor dumb bastards. Um, it's pretty easy to lure twenty-somethings who are disgruntled and want to blow shit up. So uh, not much of a stretch there. So um, so we have this whole standard where uh, the state has declared war on the public, public, and that includes denying us information, going after the whistleblowers, um, protecting those who the whistle is blown on, and then basically uh, hardly any laws rep. Uh, are there for representatives of the state, but if you are a citizen, the state will come after you with all its guns blazing, literally. And um, another extension of that point is the fact that we had the Empire State shooting recently where nine bystanders were shot by the police. So the gentleman came down after uh, murdering his boss and apparently didn't fire any shots when he was down at street level, and yet the police open fire in a crowd. So now the number one directive of protecting the citizens has also been circumvented when the police will shoot nine innocent bystanders uh, just to go after an enemy of the state. So that is the place that we are now where the public is the enemy. The public is public enemy number one. And to drive that point home further the Obama administration. So let's remember that when the Obama administration was confronted with the National Defense Authorization Act, which allows for indefinite deten detention and no warrants and no charges under terrorism laws, Obama winced, of course, saying, oh, I'm not sure if I want to sign this because uh, it might be questionable and uh, be attacking people's civil liberties. And so he put a signing statement along with the NDAA that he signed into law saying that uh, he signed it, but he did protest against the indefinite detention clause. So now we find that same president with his Justice Department going after that law, that clause, because it was struck down as unconstitutional and they want it reinstated. So Obama specifically and personally wants the indefinite detention clause in the National Defense Authorization Act. He wants it. In spite of everything else he's said and done, he wants that back. And that's the big picture here. That's what this is all about. That's what Brendan Raub is all about. That's what Julian Assange is all about. That's what Private Manning is about. That's what the public is about. We are now all on the watch list. That's what this is about. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.